Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.9 and Ergis Simulations Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to Tutorial 2, Takeoff and Basic Handling. Today's tutorial continues where we left off in the previous one, immediately after startup. The aircraft is in the same condition it was prior, uh, and in the checklist, which again, I'm very, very happy that we have this, um, we've gotten up to during taxiing. Uh, so we'd be required to go ahead and uh, test the IFF. I don't actually think that's implemented at present. Uh, I'll go ahead and pre-program something on this, although, of course, we don't actually have um, ATC to talk to, so this is kind of somewhat meaningless, but I'm going to set a mode 3 code, I'm going to set mode 3 to on, I'm going to set mode 4 to on, and I'm going to have audio for my IFF. I'm going to leave it in standby just now, because that's what this calls for. Um, nothing else to do, we're ready to go for taxi, so I'll move to the next page, and we'll get ourselves moving. So, uh, parking brake is currently pulled out, we can push that in, and then the procedure is to advance the throttle to just about 6,000 RPM, as we can see on the RPM gauge here. At that point, the aircraft should become unstuck. We'll test the wheel brakes. They do work. That's nice. And then we'll make sure that nose wheel steering is working. We're in the high gain mode, remember, so you do need to be a little bit careful, a little bit more careful than I just was, for sure. And we're going to make a left turn here. And we've got a couple of aircraft ahead of us, so we might need to wait for just a moment before we join the taxiway. But it's that simple. And when you've got the throttle at idle, you should expect the engine to return to about 2,900, plus or minus 100. Uh, that's going to be the standard there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the RWR tones just now. And uh, I'll turn off the search threats as well, because we don't really care about that. You'll notice that the limb flashes. That's simply because we do have search radars currently uh, on the display. So it warns us that we are actually hiding stuff. Okay, no other aircraft here just now. Oh, and one thing I did forget is that this switch here, one click forwards will give us the taxi light. So let's make sure we've got our taxi light on. And also in our configuration display here, we can see slats down, flaps fully down, gear down. So aircraft is ready to rumble. Just a hint of rain as we taxi out to the runway now. Very nice. And during taxi, we've got some more items that we're supposed to check. So helmet visor should be lowered. Well, we, <laughs> we can imagine we've done that. A canopy is closed and locked. Uh, the, the warning light for that is out. And if we look at the warning panel in general, all warning lights are now extinguished. So that's, that's nice. We'd pull in the harness. Uh, radar at this stage can go to transmit. So this switch here, just left of the navigational indicator, can go fully up. And the radar is now on. Uh, TACAN could go to transmit and receive. So down here on the little panel here, I'm going to flip it to T and R. That's the normal position for the TACAN. Uh, slats and flaps check are extended. We've just done that. Emergency regulation light is out. That's this light here on the left-hand side of the, the cockpit. It will actually do a test of that because that's the, the first flight of the day and that's something we do. But uh, we'll do that at the hold short uh, once we get there. So, I will demonstrate how we get airborne in this amazing machine, and then we'll also do some very basics of handling. So, the use of the navigational uh, indicator, the very basics, uh, I'll do a proper tutorial on that at a later date. Uh, we'll cover the autopilot and how to correctly set, uh, interrupt, and disengage it, uh, and we'll also take a quick look at TACAN navigation as well. It was supposed to be light rain. But this doesn't look very light. <laughs> it's very pretty, though. Bit of moisture on the canopy. Uh, the aircraft ahead of us have already taken off now. So I'm just going to make my way to the runway, which is the next right turn here. Luckily, I've done this a few times before, and I know the layout of this airfield. 
visibility is now quite poor. Okay, so I'm going to bring it to the hold short, and then we'll do the throttle regulator check. That's something you should do on the first flight of the day. Okay, I'll do nicely on the tow brakes there. Let's actually pull the parking brake, just give ourselves an easier time. Okay, so the, the regulator check. Uh, this aircraft has a backup throttle. It calls it the regulator. There's the control here, emergency regulation control lever. It can be pushed forwards and backwards, and it electronically adjusts the throttle. This is the switch that engages and disengages it, and this is the warning light. So we're being told here, throttle to idle, that's done. Emergency regulator to on. We now have the warning light, so we check that that comes on. Uh, and we can actually increase the RPM by blipping it to make sure it works. So monitor your RPM instrument here. I'm going to right-click to push this forwards for just a moment. We'll see throttle increasing. I'm going to pull it all the way back again. Throttle decreasing. That's a good test. I'm going to close the switch, close the cover. The warning light goes out, and we should observe that idle is uh, achieved at around about 2,900, plus or minus 100. That's a good test. So the emergency regulator works. At this stage, I'm also going to put on my landing light, so that's fully forward, and I would also put on my IFF to normal. Uh, quick scan of the cockpit. Is there anything else we want to do? Uh, I'll set my course uh, for the TACAN to 288. That's approximate runway heading for this airfield. That's looking good. And everything else, I think, is ready to go. Uh, we've pre-selected waypoint 3, and we've set our navigational instrument to INS navigation. Uh, actually, waypoint three is a little bit close. I might actually go straight to four. So you can move this wheel to choose which waypoint you want and then press asterisk to actually select it. And the currently selected waypoint always shows up in this window in the middle. You can see I've got four there just now. There, we've got the pointer that's a little bit further away. Uh, I'll even, I'll set up a preliminary uh, heading bug for that kind of direction, because uh, then I can, demonstrate the uh, autopilot heading mode to you all. Great. Okie dokie, we're going to take the center line now. So, disengage the parking brake and advance the throttle just a touch. Is there anything else that tells us here? No, we've just got the takeoff procedure. Uh, I'll go through the takeoff procedure as I take the center line so that you all know what we're going to do. So, um, we hold the aircraft on the brakes and we advance the throttle fully. Uh, we're going to wait for afterburner engagement. Uh, and that's indicated by the lights just underneath the RPM gauge, and then we're going to let go of the, the wheel brakes. Uh, we're going to accelerate to 120 knots, and at 120, we're going to start pulling the stick back. We should expect the aircraft to become unstuck at about 150 knots, and uh, we'll then take off. Uh, we want to do about 10 to 12 degrees of nose up, as indicated by the sight here. Um, immediately, we want gear to come up, Speaking of which, let's remove the safety on the gear now. Uh, we want flaps up before 200 knots, and then we want to disengage the afterburner at 300 knots. And that's us climbing away normally. Uh, below the RPM gauge, we have INJ. That lets us know that injection is occurring, so the afterburner is about to ignite. And then we have FON, which just lets us know the afterburner is engaged. Um, and then I think this warning light is letting us know that something's gone wrong with the afterburner. So for that, you probably want to decrease throttle and then increase it again, see if you get it relit. Anyway, at this stage, I'm going to advance throttle uh, a little bit, make sure the engine's winding up nicely. Looks good. Going to go full. We have injection. We have afterburner. I'm off on the uh, tow brakes. Very gentle on the nose wheel steering. It's quite twitchy. Speed is coming up. This is our main airspeed indicator here. 120, pulling back, nose is up, hold it, looking good, gear up, flaps up, it all happens quite quick when we're in this clean configuration, up we come, that looks good, we're in clean configuration, we're above 300 knots, so we're going to come out of afterburner now. There you go. Light goes out. Going to bring the nose down just a little bit. 
And I'm going to bring the throttle back a little bit as well. We don't want to accelerate too much. I'm going to trim the aircraft. Keep in mind this is not a fly-by-wire aircraft, so we're manually trimming. And I'm going to begin a right-hand turn here and make my way towards the first waypoint. First waypoint is this thick needle, and you can also see distance indicated in nautical miles. So, coming around... I'm going to bring the throttle even further back because we're accelerating. And I'm going to level us out at about 4,000, Angels 4. Uh, that's us approaching it now. And I'm also going to engage the autopilot. We can do that by pressing this PA button. And as the altimeter reads about 4,000, I'm going to engage the altitude hold. On. The aircraft will now maintain that altitude automatically. I'm going to give it just a bit more throttle. We throttled back too much. Cool. And, uh, well, yeah, we've, we've turned right... Oh, I pulled too hard on the stick. Let me push the autopilot trigger, and that gets rid of that warning. And then you can see the last mode that was on flashes a few times. Okay, that was my fault. I pulled too hard on that. So we've got that mode re-engaged. Uh, I'm going to set my heading bug. Now, the heading bug on this instrument is controlled using this cap... A fish, I think it says. Uh, you can see it moves this little chevron. Uh, I'm going to co-position the chevron with uh, my first waypoint, and then I'm going to hit the cap button, and that commands the autopilot to maintain a heading as well. So we're now in altitude and heading hold modes with the autopilot. So the autopilot has a disengagement lever, and it also has a trigger. We can press and hold the trigger, and you'll see that uh, P is in red, and the previously engaged mode flashes for a while, and we can now manually maneuver the aircraft. And when I release the autopilot trigger, it engages the basic mode again. Now, the basic mode is just a pitch and roll uh, holding mode. We can use the trim hat to actually uh, change the pitch, doing little clicks, and we can also change the heading by doing little clicks left and right as well. Uh, at this time, though, I'm going to re-engage altitude and heading modes, and now the aircraft will basically fly itself. Uh, also, we're getting a bit slow. I could tell because the, the rain was streaming over the canopy in a funny way. So let's get a bit more power on here. Uh, we can also pull the disengagement lever for the autopilot. That does this. We now have complete manual control again, uh, and I can push the autopilot trigger to remove the warning. Uh, and again, it flashed the altitude hold mode a few times, and then it went out. I'm going to again engage the basic mode, and altitude, and heading holds. And now the aircraft is back flying itself again. Cool. So yeah, that's the disengagement lever and the autopilot trigger. They're, they're uh, very handy to have mapped on your HOTAS. Uh, next, we're going to take a little look at the uh, navigational instrument here. Uh, the top half means that we're in INS navigational mode. The N is for normal. VA is for offset. We won't cover that today, but you can you can do INS offset navigation as well. Uh, then the bottom half is RNAV. This can either be TACAN or VOR, uh, and you'll see that it also has normal and offset modes. So if I just now set it to normal, we're now getting uh, the thick pointer pointing towards uh, Pathos, and we're getting a distance from Pathos at this time. So that's how that works. Uh, I'm going to return it back to INS navigation, just like that, and we're going to advance to waypoint 9, press asterisk. It's now pointing for waypoint 9, uh, and as before, I could just turn uh, the heading bug here to get myself pointed kind of roughly towards where I want to go, and then I can manually fly it thereafter. I'm going to bring the throttle back a little bit again. Nice. And those are pretty much the basics of navigating with the aircraft. Uh, you've got INS and uh, TACAN. You also have VOR. I could tune a VOR into here. Currently, I actually have the ILS for Pathos, uh, and I currently have the TACAN set for Pathos as well, and I could flip between these two. Uh, other thing to note on the instrument is that currently the pointer is set for radar. Uh, I can flip it to VOR, and we'll get uh, a pointer pointing directly to whatever tuned VOR station we have. We're currently not getting a signal, so it just pins to the to the north there. And we're continuing to come around. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to have a dedicated tutorial next all about landing, because landing this aircraft is somewhat complex, and I think it deserves uh, a dedicated video. But those are pretty much the basics. Uh, I guess one other thing I could demonstrate is if I take off the heading and the altitude modes, and I just leave the aircraft back in uh, its kind of basic autopilot mode, uh, I could pull the trigger, roll the aircraft out here, and then release. And if we're close to wings level, it will just level the wings. Uh, I can then bump the trim pitch up a few times, and I can manually command a pitch up there and just leave it flying that. And then same goes for the heading. Uh, I can push and hold trim left and right and make it do a turn. And then when I release and bump it the other way, it will roll out. So you've got some very, very uh, basic abilities there to control the aircraft with the autopilot on. Apparently in the real world they would often, if they were doing kind of cruising or navigating flight, they would just leave the autopilot on because it makes the aircraft very simple to, to operate. But I can pull again the autopilot lever and then push the trigger and everything is now completely disengaged and I once again have manual control. Alright, and that's everything for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that.